Why do the gospel accounts differ? Why did Jesus use parables? Are there demon-possessed people today? The Issues Etc. Book of the Month for August is the big book of New Testament questions and answers. You can find out more at issuesetc.org or by calling Concordia Publishing House 1-800-325-3040. The big book of New Testament questions and answers is written by Dr. Michael Eschelbach of Concordia University, Chicago. The big book of New Testament questions and answers. The second stanza of the hymn, The Angel Gabriel, sung by the Concordia Seminary Chorus. Welcome back to Issues Etc. Today is a day in the church that some are marking in a big way. It is a major, major feast for the majority of Christians on the planet, for, well, half the Christians, about one billion of them, the celebration of Mary. Some are celebrating Mary's assumption into heaven, a belief that Mary was bodily assumed into heaven, maybe not even suffering death. Others are kind of meeting halfway there, thinking maybe this isn't just about the death of Mary, but maybe about her early resurrection. How should we remember and celebrate Mary on this 15th of August of August when, well, the church is doing this? And should the church be remembering the mother of our Lord. Welcome back to Issues Etc. We're coming to you live from the studios of Lutheran Public Radio in Collinsville, Illinois. I'm Todd Wilkin. Thanks for tuning us in. Pastor Will Whedon is with us here in the studio to talk about Mary, the mother of Jesus, remembered on this day, August the 15th. And the second half hour here, the church will be remembering tomorrow Isaac, the son of Abraham. We'll do it today with Dr. Nathan Jastrom of Concordia University, Mequon, Wisconsin. Join us if you would, one eight seven seven six two three my ie 877-623-6943. Send us an email, talkback at issuesetc.org, or tweet at issuesetc. Pastor Will Whedon is Director of Worship and Chaplain of the International Center for the Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod. Will, welcome back. Hey, thank you, Todd. What are most Christians— celebrating today and why are you uh, why have you recently said look if there's ever a day when the church shouldn't throw out the baby with the bathwater it's august 15th yeah well you know as you as you alluded at the, at the beginning this is a huge festival day for our roman catholic brothers and sisters and same with the orthodox um a day when when they believe that mary was literally taken up into heaven bodily um, bodily assumed, so that the title, the assumption, um, and uh, and without tasting death, perhaps. I mean, that's sort of the Roman take, and the, the Orthodox take is more uh, well, you know, dying, but then being resurrected um, by by Christ. Uh, you know, the general resurrection already being realized in her. And uh, this is you, 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 the, the point of of her being taken to heaven. That you you get this picture of the Queen Mother then, and the Queen Mother is, I like to put it, the softy. She's the one you go to if, you know, for, for your for your prayers. This is this is how in, in Orthodoxy and in Roman Catholicism you get this. I mean, not that, of course, they pray to, to the Blessed Trinity, but they also have no problem with the invocation of Mary, particularly of Mary, um, as well as, as other saints. At the time of the Reformation, this was recognized as, uh, this is more than a little bit of a problem. Uh, I Mary wasn't a problem. Not Mary is the problem, not the problem. But the problem was putting Mary in that spot, especially conceiving of her as somehow more tender, more kind, more more loving than her son. And the reformers, especially the Lutheran reformers, were at pains to say, "Look, even if the saints can hear your prayers, you have everything a thousand times better in Jesus. Just ask Him. He wants you to come to Him. His Father wants you to pray to Him. The Holy Spirit Himself is the Father's gift to you through the Son, so that you can indeed." know how to pray when you, when you no longer know how to pray the spirit will pray within you and and this this direction of of um of, of the reformation then it, they were all agreed that that the invocation of the saints was ruled out whether you were lutheran or reformed but the lutherans i mean the reformed response was then say so 
the baby goes out with the bathwater. The commemoration of the saints goes with with the, the loss of the invocation. The Lutherans took a decidedly different course and retained the festival of the saints. In fact, I wish I had, I could show you, I, I've got the, the beautiful uh, Magdeburg Cathedral book, um, as your copy thereof. Um, and, you know, this is the Lutheran cathedral, and it's the services for the cathedral for every single day of the entire calendar year. And so when you get to the, 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 the what we would call the minor festival, it's the, the, this list is not as a huge, massive type across the front. The feast of the blessed, the feasts of the blessed Virgin Mary, and then in real small type, and all the other saints. <laughs> <laughs> so I mean, the Lutherans still had this very great appreciation and love for the blessed Virgin Mary that lasts, you know, well beyond the Reformation. And uh, loving Mary is never the problem. The problem is when when we turn to her and expect from her as a creature, what we really should only be looking for and getting from God as the creator. The reformers, you know, to a man, said this is bordering on idolatry, the way that it's actually practiced. Now, I I, I want to say that, you know, my, my take on this is, you know, I, I hope it doesn't sound too goofy, but I assume that when an Orthodox Christian or a Roman Catholic Christian since their prayer to Mary, God just takes it as mail that's been wrongly addressed, <laughs> you know, and takes it to, to, to himself. You know, there's really the, he's the one that is the ultimate object of their uh, of their prayer, and that that was the intention. But Lutheran simply wiped out this invocation of Mary, but not the remembrance of Mary. And so the feasts of Mary that continued to be observed in the Lutheran Church were several of them. Number one and primary, the big one. Was the Feast of the Annunciation, the day the angel Gabriel comes to Mary, March 25th, nine months from Easter, or from if, Christmas rather, and announces to her, you are going to become the mother of God. A beautiful, wonderful promise. And, and Mary's uh, fiat, her, let this be to me according to your word, um, as a humble handmaiden accepting the, the will of the Lord. Then the next big one is the Feast of the Visitation, that, you know, that historically fell Jul- July 2nd. Um, recently they moved it to um, May 31st in some of the, the calendars. But the, the the day commemorates the visit of, of Mary to Elizabeth. And Elizabeth, remember, freaking out. With, well, why is it granted to me that the mother of my Lord should come to me of all people? And then this day, which is the day traditionally celebrating then Mary's death, Mary's dormition. That's a great word for it. Her falling asleep in in her son. One more day, it actually showed up in some early CPH Bibles. If you have a CPH Bible in German, it has the list of the the, the festivals and the readings in the back. And you'll see the the, um, Geburtstag Maria um, listed in Mm -hmm. September, the birthday of Mary in in September. Those were the days that were were, um, uh, observed uh, uh, in in Lutheran churches, remembering her. So so none of the remembrance of Mary was eliminated, but the whole uh, cult of the saints— well, um, we would say we kept the cult of the saints. What we did not keep in the cult of the saints was the invocation of the saints. Mm-hmm. But but we kept the commemoration of the saints in worship. Uh, that that's the point. Why Mary, um, first among, first among well, them? Why? Why, why per, is she this? Why is she the the in in a sense? I mean, can we say kind of the mother of the saints? Well, um, boy, before I get to that, mm-hmm. can I just? Can, do, 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 do we have a time right now? I'm not sure. I'm not we tracking do. the time. For me to share, I, I want in a more non-polemical sense, a devotion is, and I think it answers that question in a way. Uh, th- th- this is something I, I, I shared with, uh, with the Senate on its Facebook today. Um, it's a meditation on, on Mary's falling asleep. Listen to these words. I remember when the angel came and told me, and my heart burst with joy and terror. I remember when I came to the door of Zechariah's house and Elizabeth knew my secret and my heart melted and my eyes burned with tears and my mouth prophesied. I remember when I felt your movement first inside my body and I realized that I was the living ark of the living God. I remember when first I saw your face and touched your hands and looked into my Joseph's eyes. I remember when they came creeping in to see you, to worship you, the shepherds of the night, and told me songs of angels and glory in the highest and peace on earth. I remember when we brought you to the temple and the old man took you in his arms and blessed God ready to die and told me of pain yet to come. I remember 
when they came from the east and bowed before you as I held you and gave their gifts, the gold, the incense, the myrrh, while the star's light shone upon us. I remember when he woke me and we fled into the night ahead of the terror of Herod's sword. I remember when we came home at last and the people all looked and talked, but you were all our joy. I remember when you stayed behind, when you left us, when we found you in the temple and my heart rose up in fear, realizing that you chose to abide in that place of sacrifice and death. I remember when you spoke to me in roughness and yet made the water into wine. I remember when we came to make you take your rest and you taught me that all these in need were dear to you as your own family. I remember when they took you, tortured you, crucified you. And before my eyes rose up the old man in the temple, his words haunted me still, and a sword ran through me as I watched you dying. I remember when you looked on me and the beloved one and gave us to each other for all our days. I remember when the light died in your eyes and my heart sank beyond tears and words. I remember after the empty days when they came and told me that you lived again and joy flooded my heart and I knew what I had always known. Your every promise was true. I remember when we prayed together after you had gone into heaven and the Spirit came in wind and flame. I remember how they went and told the news to all the world and welcomed each new believer as my beloved child, a brother of my son, the king of all. I remember it all as I die, as I lay my head down in death. My son, I am not afraid. I go to you, to you who have conquered death, to you who are the forgiveness of all sins. Receive me, child, receive me. I remember, I remember, I remember. Who wrote that? I did that. You wrote that? Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Congratulations, Eleanor. That was remarkable. Well, thanks. <laughs> how does that, how does that uh, answer that question? Because that's a catalog of every mention of Mary. Every mention of Mary <laughs> in, in the New Testament. It shows you this, this how intimately tied into the story of Jesus she really is. And... It shows especially this moment on the cross where Jesus looks at John. And remember, John is not just called John. He's called there the disciple whom Jesus loved. And that puts you in there along with him. And and so uh, Jesus says to the disciple whom he loves, he says to you, behold your mother. He gives his father to be our father, his mother to be our mother. We get to be part of his family. When we come back, we're going to explore that a little bit more as we remember uh, the Blessed Virgin Mary, the mother of Jesus, on this Thursday afternoon, August the 15th. I invite your questions and comments, one 877 myie 877-623-6943. Send us an email, talkback at issuesetc.org, or a tweet at issuesetc. Pastor Whedon has recently uh, written, uh, Jesus mom, your mom, because you're one family in him. I like the logic of that. Part of the reason that the church is remembering Mary is because having been made brothers and sisters of Jesus, uh, we certainly have his father as our father, his heavenly father as our father. How could we deny that? Well, if we have his father as our father, then at least in some sense, we have his mother as ours as well. We'll talk about that on the other side of the break. One eight seven seven six two three six nine four three. Talk back at issuesetc.org or send us a tweet at issuesetc. Ten more minutes with Pastor Will Whedon, Director of Worship and Chaplain of the International Center for the Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod. Then we're going to be talking about Isaac, son of Abraham, remembered by the church tomorrow. Dr. Nathan Jastrom of Concordia University, Wisconsin, will be our guest. Thanks to the following congregations for standing with us by joining the Issues Etc. 300, Grace Lutheran, Tulsa, Oklahoma, Heritage Lutheran, Valparaiso, Indiana, Mount Olive Lutheran, Duluth, Minnesota, Our Saviors Lutheran, Wyndham, Minnesota, St. John's Lutheran, Algoma, Wisconsin, Our Savior Lutheran, Ridgecrest, California, St. Mary's Lutheran, Des Moines, Iowa, St. John Lutheran, Yuma, Colorado, Christ Lutheran, Kansas City, Missouri, and Redeemer Lutheran, Lincoln, Nebraska. 
Find out how your church can support this worldwide outreach by including Issues Etc. in your mission or advertising budget. Go to our website, issuesetc.org, click Support, and print a one-page flyer. When your congregation joins the Issues Etc. 300, we'll publicize your congregation on the radio, at our website, and in the Issues Etc. journal. Issuesetc.org, click Support, the Issues Etc. 300. Evangelical and Catholic. You're listening to Issues Etc. Steadfast Lutherans. People who believe the law condemns everyone and should be preached to the fullest. People who believe the gospel is for everyone and should be preached to its sweetest. Traditional Lutheran doctrine and practice deliver every Sunday this law and gospel, that Christ was crucified for us sinners. To all who received him, who believed in his name, the gospel of John says, he gave the right to become children of God. To see how Steadfast Lutherans preserves this good news for everyone, visit SteadfastLutherans.org. Did you know that we send out an email each week that details upcoming show topics? It's available for you to include in your weekly church bulletin. Just click the logo for the Issues Etc. Journal and Weekly Bulletin insert at issuesetc.org and sign up to receive the church bulletin blurb. It's an easy way to invite your fellow parishioners to listen to Issues Etc. Issuesetc.org, look for the Issues Etc. Journal logo and register to receive a weekly bulletin paragraph from Issues Etc. St. George's Chapel Choir with stanza two of the hymn, Ye Watchers and Ye Holy Ones. Pastor Will Whedon is our guest. We're remembering Mary, the Mother of Jesus, on this, the 15th of August. I'm Todd Wilkin. This is Issues, etc. Let's see what John has to say. He is listening in St. Anne, Missouri. Hi, John. Hi. Uh, excellent program. Very fascinating. Uh, my question is, with the communion of saints... I can ask you to pray for me, and if I can ask you to pray for me, I presume, I would think I can ask Mary to pray for me. And just lastly, that uh, intercession of Mary at Cana, Mary's intercession at Cana. John, thank you very much. Thanks for listening in St. Anne. Let's deal with both of those things, first of all. And that is often kind of the logic that's used here. I would ask you to pray for me. Mm -hmm. Why would I not ask a saint who has gone... on to be with Christ to pray for me. No, yeah, especially his mother. Mm-hmm. Um, the, the the thought behind the, the the Lutheran objection to it, and I think it's it, it it makes all the sense in the world. Number one, the prayers to Mary were never content to be confined to pray for us. They always grew to be asking Mary to do other things for us. So the history of it is tainted. Now, I don't want to break your train of thought, but it is quite clear from Holy Scripture that those who have died in Christ continue to intercede on our behalf. We, we do not in any way deny the intercession of the saints in heaven. In fact, our Lutheran confessions say, grant it, bless it, Mary prays for the church. Our Lutheran confessions also say the saints in heaven pray for the church in general. But because Scripture doesn't say anything about the saints knowing the actual condition of things happening here on earth— and this is a point, by the way, they pick up from St. Augustine, who makes the exact same point in his little document on burying the dead. He says, you know, that we, have no, we have no promise or guarantee that the saints have a clue about what's actually happening here on earth. In other words, we have no, no, no promise that they hear our prayers. So here's where the Lutheran Confessions and uh, the, the Lutheran Reformers simply said, look, if the, inter- if the invocation of the saints were something that we were to be doing— then we should have in Scripture a command to do so, a promise about doing so, and an example. But look, there is no example of it in Scripture. There is absolutely no command about it, and there's certainly no promise about the saints actually being able to hear our prayers. So if I can put it this way, instead of Lutherans saying, you know, um, 
ora pro nobis, you know, pray for us. We like to say orat pro nobis. She prays for us. We don't need to worry. You don't need to ask her. It already takes place. And in fact, that's one of the uh, the beautiful quotes that uh, I find uh, from, from Dr. Luther to be so absolutely wonderful. He says, this is in his uh, commentary on uh, John 17. He says, who can harm or injure a man who has this confidence, who knows that heaven and earth and all the angels and the saints will cry to God when the smallest suffering befalls him? He's trying to talk about us being one body in Christ, and if one member suffers, they all suffer. One is honored, they are all honored. So you don't need to ask the saints to pray for you. They're already doing it. <laughs> trust, trust that that is so. I love that. And I think we should say that if we had a command to do so and a promise— attached to it, and an example in Scripture, if we had just one, mm-hmm. then we'd have no objection to the invocation of the saints as it's practiced by the Roman and the Eastern Church. Right. The other question he had was her intercession at Cana. Yeah, he clearly intercedes at Cana with, with her son, and that's often pointed out to be that we'll see, that's that's a, the type of her intercession. But I think the big thing at Cana that you need to carry away from that are her last words. She said, whatever he says to you, do it. So did he ever say anything about turning to his mother to ask for for these things. No, no, he absolutely did not. Eric uh, listens in Pennsylvania. He says, I listen to Roman Catholic radio on the way to work, but always tune out when they pray the Hail Mary. Is there an Orthodox version I could pray where, and where could I find where could I find it? Yeah, well, you know, actually the, the original uh, part of the Hail Mary is, is simply Scripture, right? And so at the time of Luther, Luther's personal prayer book has a version of the uh, Hail Mary in it, the Ave Maria. And it goes like this, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women. Blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Period. <laughs> and so it's no a pray med- for us. Yeah, no, no, in, yeah. that was that was actually in Luther's time. That was not common part of the praying of the Ave. And so the Ave itself simply end it with the scriptural words. Um, I think the Orthodox and their version of it add completely non-objectionable. Um, for for thou hast brought forth the Savior who redeemed our souls. You know, that's that's why, uh, you know, we, we say rejoice. Re- and they translate the Ave, which I think it probably should be translated with, with rejoice, Mary. Um, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women. Blessed is the fruit of your womb. Um, and then uh, you have brought forth the Savior of our souls. It's a beautiful prayer. So I think that that... Uh, you know, there, there's a, there can be a place in Christian piety where we remember the medi- and meditate on the incarnation that way. That's that's certainly not a problem. As I said, it was in Luther's personal prayer book, 1521, and that continued to be part of that personal prayer book reprinted throughout the entirety of the 16th century. Okay. Um, Speaking of Luther. Oh, yes. Go ahead. Ma- maybe, maybe we should uh, give uh, uh, the, 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 the Luther quote on, on this particular thing, um, which I found absolutely beautiful. He— this is from a Christmas homily that he delivered um, in 1522. Those were always his best sermons. Yeah, oh, his Christmas sermons are just unbelievable. But he says, oh, this is the great joy of which the angel speaks. This is God's comfort and his surpassing goodness. That man, if he believes, may glory in this treasure, that Mary is his true mother, Christ his brother, God his father, Make sure that you exchange your sinful birth for his sinless birth, because when you do, he says, you're surely the Virgin Mary's child, darling child, and you sit in her lap. <laughs> Absolutely a beautiful picture. Again, picture of Jesus' mom becoming our mom because Jesus has literally brought us into his family. And this is something that bears repeating every time we have a conversation about Mary. Um, and it, it applies not just to Mary, but to the remembrance of all the saints, mm-hmm. whoever they may be. Uh, those that are marked in our calendar, those who are not marked in our calendar, because we every congregation has its own list of people who have gone on to be with Christ. The to to what we say of them is always a confession of something of Jesus, and not of they themselves. Talk about that. Why 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 Mary? To confess things about Mary, as, as far as Scripture goes, is really about confessing the incarnation of our Lord. When you're with somebody that's steadfastly looking at something, it's almost impossible for you to just sort of stare at them. And instead, what do you do? You look at, where are they looking? And it's the mark of the saints of God, Mary and of all the saints, that their focus is on the Lamb, the slain Lamb raised in glory. This is where they focus. And when we attend to them, it doesn't take very long at all before everything is drawn to where they're looking. 
you know, they're, they're not interested in talking about themselves. They're not interested in that at all. They're interested in looking at what God's up to in the blood of Jesus. And this is where their attention draws us. When we remember the saints, we're remembering these people whose eyes were steadfastly fixed on him. Mary's gaze is toward her son, and that calls us that way. In fact, this shows up beautifully in art. I don't know if you, you know, how many times you see this, where Mary is almost never depicted alone. She's almost always depicted holding her son, and if she's either looking at her son or she's looking looking out at you, but her hand is gesturing toward him. So it's like him. He, he is what it's all about. And, and when the church rightly honors Mary, we honor her not for Mary by herself, but for this beautiful thing that Mary, um, you know, she, she, she we, we, in her son, her, Jesus becomes the child of Mary to make you and me and all of us, to make us be the children of God. Jesus comes to do that for us, and he does it by literally being born of a woman, born under the law, so that we might receive the adoption as sons. Pastor Will Whedon is Director of Worship and Chaplain of the International Center for the Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod. Will, thank you. And by the way, we will post the text of that meditation on uh, the remembrance of Mary at our website, so you can read it for yourselves, issuesetc.org. Click Listen On Demand. Will, thank you. Thank you so much. Thanks to Kevin in Ohio, he's posted a review of Issues Etc. yesterday on iTunes titled Direct Injection Catechesis. He says, listening to Issues Etc. is like pumping full strength, undiluted catechism right into your ears. They give you information and historic facts to apply your faith throughout your life. They have an amazing lineup of guests who regularly refute even the strongest and most tempting false doctrine and practices, whether you agree or disagree. You can't argue that they aren't presenting a biblical Christ-centered position against this individual-centered world. Well, that's just uh, one of the many reviews that you'll find there at our at the iTunes store of the iTunes podcast. We'd like you to write a review, and all you got to do is go to iTunes, find issues, etc. And when you do so, click ratings and reviews, write your review, then send that review to contest at issuesetc.org. It'll be your chance to win one of two audio DVDs of the Issues Etc. Making the Case Conference contest at issuesetc.org. When we come back, we're going to talk about Isaac, son of Abraham, with Dr. Nathan Jastrom. The righteousness of God, baptized into Christ, present suffering and future glory, all themes from the book of Romans. And you can delve deeply into Paul's letter to the Romans with the Issues Etc. Book of the Month for August, the Concordia Commentary on Romans 1-8. through You can browse before you buy at issuesetc.org, or you can purchase the Concordia Commentary on Romans 1-8 through by calling Concordia Publishing House, 1-800-325-3040. Hello, this is Pastor Kevin Golden of Village Lutheran Church in Ladue, Missouri. The Saints at Village Lutheran are proud to be part of the Issues Etc. 300, sharing in their Christ-centered, cross-focused proclamation of the gospel. If you find yourself in St. Louis, join us on Sundays at 815 and 1045 for the Divine Service, 930 for Bible study and Sunday school, as we receive Christ's gifts of forgiveness, life, and salvation. Or visit us on the web at www.villagelutheranchurch.org. Hey, St. Louis, how would you like to achieve your fitness goals in a fun and supportive atmosphere? Hi, this is Kevin Reisick, owner and operator of Arch Fitness of East Alton, Illinois. We offer adult boot camps throughout the week. These camps include cardiovascular conditioning, muscular strength and endurance training, balance and coordination activities, and more. For more information, give me a call at 618-670-6952, Arch Fitness of East Alton, Illinois, 618-670-6952. We're giving away two audio DVDs of the Issues Etc. Making the Case Conference. That's almost eight hours of teaching. Here's how you can win. Find the Issues Etc. podcast at the iTunes store. Click Ratings and Reviews and write a review. Then send the text of your review to contest at issuesetc.org. The two listeners with the best reviews will receive the audio DVD of the Issues Etc. Making the Case Conference. We'll announce the winners on Labor Day. The faith, once for all, delivered to the saints. You're listening to Issues Etc. The church's music from the second century. Shepherd of tender youth, guiding in love and truth. The sixth century. The 
the 12th century. The 16th century. The 21st century. The best of the church's music from the past 2,000 years. LutheranPublicRadio.org.